so what the heck is this i don't know but i'll tell you what i do know and that's it it's but ugly that's what it is so <laughs> i'm gonna try and work on this sheet today you might wonder how did i end up with a sheet like this and the story behind this is as old as as time <laughs> You know, that old saying about art therapy, just take a piece of paper, throw colors on it. So uh, if you are in the mood for painting, but like in my case, I had some hand issues, so I couldn't like hold, uh, the, I couldn't grip around the brush. So because I wanted to play with colors anyway, I just uh, tried out the experiment of taking 10 sheets and then just throwing stuff on it where I didn't need to hold a pen or a pencil so I kind of ended up with these 10 sheets of just ugly <laughs> ugly starfish um, napkins I like this napkin so you will see that pop up several times I did try and work on some of them. I don't know when to say that it's finished, but some of them are like in progress. So from time to time, I'm planning to take out these sheets and then trying to, yeah, work on them. <laughs> but I have to say that it was fun creating the the sheets. But when you get to that stage, it's like, now what, right? So, this one I really like. I would consider this one as finished. Like, it's uh, it's done. I don't feel like revisiting this drawing and do anything else to it. So, that one is finished. <laughs> this one has reached this infamous stage where... I can't really see how I can put more on it but what to say is that I really like when you're covering up all the crazy in the background because then you're left with these nice textured surfaces oh it doesn't really come off at the camera but I'm telling you guys I got like messy rage texture here on the roses because of the background because it, the background just was was crazy you know and here I tried to leave out some of the background to show the crazy and then just put um, a face on it a lot of people use the phrase like put a bird on it in my case it's always a face like put a face on it so in case I don't know what to do with a drawing I simply just put a face on it these flowers were actually a tutorial from Kathy Arbor so I was just trying out the technique on this sheet because yeah it's a good practice sheet for new stuff so I think I can recommend if you need some sheets that are going to be practice sheets for <laughs> new techniques or something then do like this, grab 10 sheets and just start throwing stuff on it. It looks like really ugly and crazy when it's in this stage right here. And especially these two, I mean, these two, it's so hard. I mean, how can you, how can you uh, jump in and continue in such a mess like this? But yesterday I uh, completed a membership stream made from Kathy Arbor and it was about cutting up existing artwork that you have and then collaging in some shapes in this case it was working with the kaleidoscopes and it kind of went me wanting to go back to this pile of paper and work on it once more uh, I think what I liked about the membership stream is that you get a messy look like look at these kaleidoscopes here of course I covered it up in all kinds of 
layer because, yeah, you know, that's just that's just what happens. <laughs> but this mess reminded me of these pages, so that's why I'm determined on um, trying to work on one of these sheets on this stream. So hang in there for a long one because it's it's gonna take a while. Okay, so I keep looking at this. There's something really likable about this sheet. I think what intrigues me most is that it's like one continuously long um, line. <laughs> That's one line. And then we got a line going up here to present the ear that's two lines and the third line is just uh, making carving out the face representing hair so in a way you could say that with three symbol lines you can create a face and what I like about this sheet is the way that I managed to kind of push back but still preserve the crazy background. So using the hairline as a divider, um, it, it just um, it's okay to have so many colors on this uh, sheet, even though lots of these colors, if you look at them individually, they really don't uh, go together. <laughs> like you got like neon pink with. Um, Finnabare waxes and stickles. Oh my god, there's like a lot of things in this one. But it's a likable composition. And I can see on this sheet here that I somehow managed to get like a V shape with the stencil work. So, of course, that inspires me to put a face right here. And using the V shape to draw in attention to this center and then maybe do the same with a hair that's going to be a divider and trying to keep some of the crazy colors in the background so yeah <laughs> I think that's gonna be my plan for some reason I don't uh, really know <laughs> what pen to use. I'm really not skilled at what to do and what not to do, so I'm playing it safe by using oil pastels for this one, because uh, I've killed so many acrylic markers, you won't believe it. And my problem is that <laughs> I forget to do that coat of matte medium in between layers so I think on this sheet I will go on top of it with oil pastels and then I will try something new to see if I can seal it with matte medium and then on the third stage of working on this sheet I would once again be working on a plastic surface so it would probably allow me to come in with acrylic markers I have acrylic markers that I really like to work with. It's these ones, but I'm unable to uh, decap them. Uh, I got uh, something with my fingers. <laughs> so uh, instead of, you know, constantly have to use a tool like this to take the cap off my markers, I went out in the supermarket and bought these super inexpensive acrylic markers made for painting on rocks with and they were like really really inexpensive and then I thought okay but are they any good turns out they're like super translucent and sheer um, caps so easy to take on and off and I just want to give a shout out to a tool like this because if you've got arthritis or hand issues fat pencils like the Magnus pencil from Faber Castell and these fat markers where it's so easy to take the lid on and off just really helped me a lot through this phase so 
the disclaimer <laughs> for this stream is that you might watch me use some uh, materials that are, you're not uh, used to watch me use normally but it's not because I have changed my style or anything it's just because I have to adapt to not having uh, so much strength in my hands I also find it difficult to open and close uh, the tubes on my acrylic paints so I went out and bought these it's kind of like a gelato it's for kids once again kit supply it's a water soluble uh, pigment stick <laughs> like a lipstick you know and it's just uh, making it easy for me to be creative in times where I'm not able to you know do as much so these tools I think I will keep out here on my table but then you have seen what I want Right now, I'm planning to to want to dig into. I'm not sure whether this should be like a live stream, you know, like not live, but you know, like live art, or if I should uh, do a, a fast, fast uh, forward re <laughs> replay. Uh, so um, I'll just start drawing. I really enjoyed that one line sketch. So you have like the eye here and then the eye goes up and then you had like the with the eyes ending curve that's going in and possibly frame it like an eyebrow to come down representing the bridge of the nose to go out to a nostril so here is a nostril the downward curve of the nose another nostril whoop one line and of course you can't see it what can I do about that should I change for this okay I'm gonna mark it up for you guys I won't be able to be as intricate down here because the oil pastel stick is like a fat stick but I think you get the idea that's the first line <laughs> The second line is a mouth. Going back here. And now it turns out to frame the face. To end up representing ear that was the second line <laughs> the last line work is going to be the hair and I wanted to cover up this eye so I don't have to make um, you know like and this is nothing that I have invented it's something I saw on uh, I, I, I call it Google but to me Google is like Pinterest or <laughs> you know everything that shows an image could be Pinterest or Instagram I just remember seeing it on um, the internet but don't have any source uh, you know it's not to to be rude and not give credit but I honestly don't recall where I saw this done the first time. 
The oil pastel stick is like super opaque when it comes down. And it's a shame that it's so um, slippery on this piece of paper. So right now I'm thinking if I should go on top of this with some clear gesso because then it would be easier for me to work on it. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to turn off the camera and then just uh, give a coat of clear gesso on the face area so that I will have a better grip with working with the oil pastels. Okay, so now it's dry and I've given myself a little more grip on the paper. So hopefully the pastel, oh yeah, I can already tell the difference. It's nice. Nice. I'm not really sure where to put the colors. So right now I am just uh, trying to smear in the first layer. <laughs> I think I should go for like a really messy look because uh, the background is so, so uh, colorful and screaming. So if I go for this uh, almost like a patchy, patchy underpainting, it will uh, look the best, I hope. The set that I'm using is from Mungio. It's called Gallery. Totally fun art tool. <laughs> I really enjoy, you know, uh, the the messy part of working with oil pastels because it gives you like a, like an open window to not be so neat and sometimes when you have been watercoloring it's so so annoying having to be like neat all the time so for me it's been good to be able to switch to a different art supply so I don't get stuck on the watercolor. I still watercolor, but uh, it's fun, you know, doing something else, breaking up the pattern a little bit by picking up a very, very different art supply than what you normally use. And I find that these creamy pastel sticks are good opponent to what's so not a watercolor medium. I've watched Black Bean on YouTube and I like his colorful faces. He makes these, uh, oh, he, he's got his own like really specific style. But he always comes out with a really colorful face and it uh, just reminds me of energy. Um, how can I explain it? Yeah, it's, it's loaded with energy watching the way that he has used his colors next to each other. He's very much into the turquoise and the teals. So, of course, he's like a masculine painter in that sense. But he also likes to use really bright, um, bright colors in his creation. So, there's something for everyone watching his stuff. But he's like really, really skilled at working with oil pastels. One of his tips is to stay in the area where you are because as soon as you let the stick dry out it can be a little bit difficult to to mix and I'm not um, really <laughs> customized to paint like that. 
I jump from place to place. And I really hate the word intuitive because I don't really know what it means. But I think that I become the most intuitive when I'm using oil pastels because it is for me like just grabbing a stick, applying color, jumping from place to place. So I've often wondered, you know, when people are talking about intuitive jelly printing and maybe the background was made intuitive. Could be that's what they mean. But I'm really too uh, stiff a person to make abstract. I find that I still ponder about composition and what kind of colors I'm picking up, whether they are complementary or not. And as soon as you think like that, I don't, in my opinion, find it to be super intuitive, you know? <laughs> it's like semi-planned where you kind of want to pretend that it's not planned but if you're picking out colors deliberately because they're complementary to, to each other then it is like planned you know <laughs> so working on sheets like these helps uh, loosen me up and um, it is a little bit intimidating jumping in on a paper sheet sheet like like this one where there's so much thrown on it and it kind of turns me off you know it was super fun creating it like uh, you know <laughs> really going wild <laughs> grabbing all sorts of colors and then stencil and you know not really paying attention to leaving out a particular place where you can add colors like I really made it difficult for myself to work on these areas over here where there is this really heavy textured stencil work. So uh, it's, it's kind of a turn off having to go back revisiting these sheets, trying to make sense of it and actually utilize them for something that's supposed to, you know, um, represent a drawing but the challenge to be learned I think is super valuable for me because it helps me loosen up I'm mostly just painting by smearing out it's a, a very creamy stick, this Mangio, so it makes it possible. I got a, an even creamier stick, and it's from Sennelier. But um, <laughs> it was it's so expensive. It's so expensive, so uh, something really cheap inside of me don't want to... I'm going to use the word waste my expensive Sennelier's on a messy sheet like this because who who knows how this will turn out and I actually predict that <laughs> I will find it a little bit difficult to be satisfied with whatever turns out from this sheet because it's it was I will always remember the messy starting point so in my head I will you know unconsciously dislike it a little bit but yeah I haven't like really given this much thought other than wanting to put a face on it and then I can't wait to uh, when I have to do the division with the hair because that's kind of fun for me to have to carve out like a negative painting style to carve out the face I'm thinking I got the um, Kathy Burke was so sweet to gift me 
some awesome acrylic paint it was the dragonfly I'm thinking about maybe I should give it a a coat of that dragonfly acrylics that could look really fun Yeah, I'm really a little bit quiet today because you know what? I messed up. I totally messed up. I went in to take a nap because it was so hot today. So when I was finished with my work, I almost like, you know, collapsed and needed an instant nap. So I went in and took a sleep and then my family didn't wake me up. So I woke up at 10 o'clock in the evening it's Monday today. I totally missed Janet M. Young's stream. <laughs> and now it's past midnight and I'm unable to sleep because my nap was just too long. So the rest of the house is also quiet at this time. So I'm also uh, not talking out that loud. <laughs> But I stinking hate when it happens. I don't know if you guys have ever tried that. You plan to go in and take just a tiny nap before having to get up and cook dinner, you know, and whatnot. And then before you know it, you just kind of slept the whole evening away. So it's really going to mess up my sleeping pattern for tomorrow. But I think it's super easy to get sleep deprived during summer when it is so stinking hot. And I shouldn't even complain because I saw on the news that certain areas in the US are facing like 105, 110 even heat. Um, that's the same as like 40, 41 degrees here in Europe. That's the kind of the the scary dangerous heat right you know where if you go out and then don't bring enough water with you and keep yourself in the shade you can like really pass out <laughs> okay here I got like a hidden eye but I still have yeah I can do it like this okay it's kind of off can you see how my mouth is uh, not lining up here so maybe I can cheat with some black to kind of make it look like it's on purpose And up here we have the eyebrow, so I'm just gonna do a messy black line like that. I think I'm gonna keep this as a live art upload, even though I'm not that really talking today I need to uh, <laughs> fix the angle of the chin also because I had a, a line that's off on the lips I'm 
that's what's so fun with these kind of do you call this a drawing? I think we should call it a drawing because it's not like a painting. <laughs> you can just keep correcting. Just adding, simply just adding a, another layer on top. But it doesn't really matter. I also believe that the messier the face, the more you can get away with. Not that I kind of feel that I need to like really get away with a lot on this one, but let's say that you really was unsatisfied with something and you try to take off the oil pastel somehow <laughs> to weed sketch it or something, then you, you really invite yourself to big trouble. So the best thing is to just tangle on putting on more layers and then trying to push whatever you need to push with building up layers instead of trying to lift off and scrape off I know that you can like scrape off some of the oil pastel to uh, give yourself a, a second chance to start over with a wonky sketch but I kind of feel that you're wrecking the paper when you do it. Something is just never going to be the same <laughs> the area where you scratched. Okay, it could be fun to what put in a shocker color up here, like a color where it like really stands out. Maybe this turquoise one right here because I got that curved line so it would be great if I could uh, follow that somehow maybe I should sketch it up again This is the line that I'm talking about. Down here I also need some contrast. You're asking for trouble when you grab the black oil pastel immediately I mean you can make yourself a huge mess so it kinda is a little bit too early in this stage of the drawing to grab for this black color More red on the lips, I think. Okay, I think now is a good time to rest this um, face so that the pastel get a chance to kind of settle and dry up a little bit and then I'm gonna grab the dragonfly paint and try and work on the hairline really looking forward to that part just making the ears Okay, so I decided on two colors. It's a color shift gifted to me from Kathy Berg, and I'm gonna use the, it's called Blue Flash, and then this one is called uh, Green Flash. Okay, <laughs> so.
So before um, do doing the applying it, I think I should re uh, sketch in this hairline so I get like a a more crisp division. I wouldn't mind if you could tell that it's like one line so it gets more pronounced that this is not an ordinary drawing of a face this is different in the matter that you're using three lines so they may look like totally fat right now like too much. Maybe we can push it back where we feel that it needs to be pushed back. Now I get an excellent opportunity to fix that jawline that's kind of askew. could give her a neck yes sir I can work with this I'm thinking about picking the blue color shift for the hair and then green underneath here or should I switch it I already got a lot of green here hmm yeah let's put green here before I do so <laughs> I might want to put some pigment down just to just to kind of carve out the difference and this is where I'm using these lipstick uh, gelato wannabe I don't even know what to call this kind of kids toy art supply I don't even have the packaging <laughs> so I can't even show what it is but it's basically like like if you have the Tim Holtz crayons you know the the soft ones it's like a knockoff of that, but very, very, very inexpensive. But surprisingly, they go a long way. I've really been hard on these sticks. And like you can see here, I'm just scratching over an uneven surface, not even trying to uh, be delicate with it even though it's uh, like like painting with a lipstick they still have a lot of stick left inside of them so it goes a long way but man I was so relieved when they arrived and they gave me the opportunity to pick and grab uh, an, a pigment stick where I didn't have to uh, depend on having strong hands, strong fingers. Okay, let's try some of the blue up here. can feel that I'm totally out of touch with creating content to YouTube. I don't really know what to say. Hopefully it's okay with you guys, but this is just going to be like a semi-quiet, mellow upload. Definitely one of those streams where you need to have your own art journal. 
I work on or just put me on super fast forward play you know like where I sound like a chipmunk <laughs> nothing is really going on in my head right now I just thought that it was fun to come on and show you guys that sometimes I got a really messy starting point like this crazy sheet and this sheet was made a while ago so it's not like something I prepared for this stream so it's in my opinion even tougher to go in and try and make something out of it because uh, sometimes it's just easier to start with a blank sheet <laughs> so you kind of know where to put your your things because you got like a basic idea of what you want to create but um, having to go in on something that's and I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm saying it straight out. I really found that this paper was ugly to begin with. And I'm sticking to it. I really think it's it's uh, messy to look at. It's confusing. You can't really imagine putting more pigment on it at all. You can only think about pushing back with gesso, white or black. But refraining from that because that kind of killed the whole concept of what this is trying to be like a, a wild uh, therapeutic color out, outburst um, it's uh, <laughs> kind of a hard task for me to do because I'm not usually wor working like this I find these letters that are glued on super annoying at this stage because they grip paint and stuff very uh, unwillingly but when the piece is finished I actually like the raised points that these letters and this stencil work provide so it's a love-hate relationship going on right there It's going to be beautiful. It's also super transparent. So it's very... Um, very good medium for this drill where I want to show the the background you get the effect best when you're painting on a black surface I don't have that on this piece of, of sheet so much but I still can see the, the shine and the shimmer and the shifting color going from blue to kind of pink not pink like um, purple okay let's do the green card Almost is scooted across the ear.
Okay, we should let this dry up. Okay, I know, frames are for the last bit, but, 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 in this case, I feel that I need to frame in this piece of paper, so, <laughs> so I just kind of get some, some frames of, yeah, I just need to frame it in. It's a little bit too early to do this step, normally you do this like one of the last steps. But for some reason, I feel it would I would benefit from doing it so soon. I want to push back something in this corner here. I don't really like this corner, what's going on here. I'm just using that gel stick. I saw a stream from Sandra where she was using the marzipan sticks from Jane Davenport to do what I'm doing right now, framing. And <laughs> it just looked like really fast. And we like that, right? <laughs> and it seems to be working. This is like totally the old style of 2017 where you had that black, black, black frame around your collage work. <laughs> so I'm revisiting old times on this one. Okay, it could be fun if I had like a broken f uh, line work right here. So that it would be your imagination filling in the missing line for the neck. And I'm lucky I got a piece of paper ripped in this curve. So you might not be able to see it so much on the stream. But when you're close to this piece of paper you can actually see it. Okay. I think I'm ready for the second coat of the face. And now because I'm in a playful mood, <laughs> it would be fun to see how these, uh, these sticks work on top of oil, oil sticks. Do I, should I? Okay, I should try it. Let's start with just a light, light, light one. <laughs> so if it doesn't work, <laughs> the damage is not that big. Okay, here. Do I like it? I don't know. Not really. That was a bad idea. Okay. <laughs> but it could be fun for me if it worked. <laughs> is this the darkest red? I think so. Now I'm gonna like tap, tap, tap to give it that kind of a um, patchy, is it called painterly look? I think it's called painter, painterly look. On my first application I was smearing a lot, trying to make things <coughs> transition, but on this application I think I should loosen up a bit and then try not to smear so much except where it's necessary oh shoot now I 
kind of grab the black stick. I definitely don't have like some sort of a plan at this stage. Other than I want to go for that painterly, chunky look. <clears throat> I wish that I had like some sort of a rosier cheek. Uh, orange is the wrong color. Maybe this one. Oh shoot, <laughs> I keep, I keep grabbing the black, oh I don't like to scratch it off, it just leaves some unfortunate marks, so I'm just gonna leave it in. You use up a ton of white when you're playing with pastels. It's just such a beautiful blending um, color and if you smear it out like you see here with my finger I can actually mix it so it doesn't come out like an aggressive highlight. But it just becomes tinted of what's underneath it. Up here on the forehead, I want to leave that paper that I have collaged in because I, I like what's on that paper. Do do do. Um, something about the neck down here. I actually also like the paper here <laughs> for the neck. So <laughs> I think I'm gonna do a sloppy job of just hinting a neck, but not totally draw it in. Just hinting it like this. <coughs> What I really would like to do is to um, paint something on top of her face. So I'm sitting here thinking, has it ever been done putting matte medium on top of oil pastel and then work on top of that with some sort of acrylic marker? And did it go well? <laughs> I think I should test it out. I can't, the um, 
see what could go wrong. Maybe if the acrylic marker got like a very pointy tip, it might scratch off the matte medium layer and then you would uh, totally have um, scratches that you can't fix because it's scratched down to the first original collage paper. But if you, you don't try it, you don't know. So I definitely think that I should uh, do it on this one since these sheets are testers. You know, if there's something you want to try out, it's the perfect piece of, of paper to do so. Okay, now I need like a dark green color to go and give some shadow. I like it more and more. I can't, I can't uh, not think about what will happen if you coat this with matte medium. So we might as well just jump into it in a second. Oh, touch that black once more. <clears throat> what else? I don't want to cover up too much up here. For some <clears throat> really patchy lips. So it gets that kind of a loose um, abstract <laughs> impressionistic style. We could go heavier up here on the lash line. Yeah, I'm ready to cover it with matte medium. <laughs> Don't even know if I should let it settle a little bit, you know, oil pastels. It's not like I'm talking about they're drying up and then they get um, permanent, but they they can like have a, a different consistency when they are dry compared to when you just apply them. So let me look at this area over here while this is uh, drying up a bit. What? fun can we do with this <laughs> and this, this is where it's like really difficult because you got a lot of space here that needs some sort of um, work to be done on it 
let me think off camera <laughs> okay now things took a little weird twist um First of all, I need to prep this with some darker colors because <laughs> I actually got a very sick idea. I'm thinking about doing some stencil work on top of this oil pastel. I've never stenciled on top of it before, but to make sure that the whatever I froze on it, throw on it after that move, I need to darken up some of my colors here. My plan is a little bit crazy. You see, I got this gloss medium, and then I recently bought Liquitech acrylic ink, and I'm in love with the burnt umber in that set. So I'm thinking, and this might be a huge mistake, but I'm thinking about doing some gloss medium stencil on top of some of her face, like her hair is is um, making such a shadow, so she's having this kind of a lace veal on some of her face and I think I can get away with stenciling on top of this area because there is not really a rice textured uh, stencil work in that area so <laughs> this might be stupid but you know what I kind of like that this is not a precious drawing for me because it's on this crazy paper to begin with so like I said before <laughs> it invites you to do some really crazy experiments so far it does not look like the oil pastel is moving underneath this wet coat of transparent gloss maybe you could I could pull down the shadow further okay I'm gonna try and drag it out here underneath the hair because I got this area with the the hair that's like totally green green and I need something <laughs> anyway to break up that dull pattern that, that's in that area and this is where I should stop stenciling because now I'm bumping into those raised letters and it's just gonna give you like a nasty stencil work Okay, hopefully this will dry up before the day is over. I'm not that used to working with gloss medium. What's it called? It's for Ranger. Multi -glo multi medium gloss. So I have to confess that I worked a bit with it when I worked on the Kathy Arbor membership uh, drawing, and I decided to try and heat set it with the heat gun but I could detect some strange fumes coming from it so I'm not a fan of heat setting this at all with a heat gun so lucky for you guys this is a recorded stream so you don't need to wait for the drying time should I stencil elsewhere I don't think so yeah let's just um, see where <laughs> this brings us Okay, while we're waiting for that paste to dry, I want to use the Finiber wax and try and only touch the raised letters here. Oh, I already messed it up. <laughs> um, okay, can you use this, maybe, maybe this tool here. a little bit better 
not sure that Finnebar wax is the best medium to have on the end of this fantastic art tool. It's called Fantastics. And once again, credit to Kathy Arbor for letting me know about the existence of this old tool. I know some of you is like, heck, it's been around for years. But I recently just discovered it because Kathy Arbor used it. It's like an extension of a finger shape as a Q-tip. So when you're smearing out with your fingers like I am doing, you quickly learn that you cannot do like intricate uh, detailed strokes and you hit a, a white surface all at once. So when you're trying to coat in raised texture, you just hit everything. <laughs> Okay, over here we also got some that would look funny if they were in this peacock blue Finnebear wax. Oh my god, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but outside the birds just start waking up singing. What's the time? It's <laughs> Yay, we have hit the magical 3 o'clock at night. I can't believe that I messed up my sleeping pattern. I'm gonna hate myself tomorrow. But hooray, tomorrow I can watch the recorded of Janet's stream. <laughs> I'm so sad that I missed it live. Okay, let me see if I can clean up this stick. Ugh. I should do that off camera. Well, we're still waiting for that gloss medium to dry. I just got the crazy idea that <laughs> I want to coat the rest of the face with the gloss medium for no particular reason then it might look um, you know funny <laughs> to have some gloss medium with some texture on it and then the rest of the face in the same glossy sheen so that it's more like like the transition from the glossy area is not abrupt stopping but it continues on the rest of the face so the face will be like this glossy thing standing out on the finished page and not just a single area so yeah I'm still not sure if this is a bad move only time will tell Let's hope it dries soon. Okay, it takes like eons for this to dry. <laughs> and it's been so hot today. So just picture if I have done this during the daytime, I could have put it outside in the sun and <laughs> it would be like dry in no time. But it shouldn't be like that. I'm just redefining some of the black on this page. I think I should go around and frame it in with the oil pastel to get a more opaque frame. Oh my god, I can hear my neighbor turning on his car. He's got a night shift out at the airport. <laughs> he once said that people are awake all hours of the of the day in this house because he can see that we are, you know, <laughs> see through the windows that we are still up. So I kind of feel like a little kid. Like I, I am doing something I'm not supposed to do whenever he catch me in the middle of the night still sitting in my uh, office painting or drawing or whatever okay nicer nicer 
Um, yeah, I would love to make some pale kind of flowers on top of the hair, just like I had on the other drawing that I had in this style. I really like that. So lucky me, I got these very inexpensive acrylic markers for painting on rocks and they're very sheer so I should be able to make something that's not like in your face what's uh, strange about this marker is that it changes colors when it dries up so you won't like immediately see what I'm doing but then suddenly it dries up in a different color And it's so cool that it's got like this fat round tip so it goes rather fast compared to if I used the, my favorite acrylic markers from Flycy. Um, they got this, um, is it called a um, plastic nib? Just like the old Sharpie pens. But it's a sturdy nib. But you have to like uh, paint over and over things a couple of times when you're making tiny flowers like this. So here I feel that I'm just skating on the page like it goes pretty fast. I like that they're not so pigmented, these uh, acrylic markers, so it's just going to be a sheer suggestion of a flower. So sometimes when you get an art supply and you find it rather weak compared to top-notch, heavy pigmented stuff that you're used to work with, like in this case compared with like a Posca, um, you just have to find a way to utilize it the best, you know? And this is actually, in my opinion, <laughs> one of those situations where I kind of take in advantage that it's so sheer when it dries up. So you get a very subtle pattern of flowers. I'm doing this to kind of collect the hair area to make it seem more like one particular cluster that belongs together and it just seems like uh, what's, it, what's it called like like it seems weird that you need to throw more on this sheet to calm it down and make it look cohesive can't wait to try out the Liquitex, Liquitex Umber Ink when that um, clear medium is dried up. Ooh, now it's like white white because I I punched it, pushed up the fresh paint. difficult to see where they are. I think I'm getting all of them. One down here. <coughs> yeah, that's one side. Yeah, I like that. Just a little bit subtle, but 
still there, so I'm going to continue over here. I like the white one. I think the secret behind these, what can you call these? I'm thinking about therapy, art therapy sheets because they started out like just a frantic, uh, almost intoxicated, applying colors, just throwing tons of colors and stencil, not really thinking. The the trick is that. The more messy layers you can put on top, it kind of make it work. But when I look at it, it totally reminds me of those journal spreads back from 2017, where you start with gluing down some paper pieces, pieces and then just attack it with stencils and then black frame the the corners and the edges <laughs> so it's like uh, doing it in old style some of these letters could be coated in with finnabar waxes don't really know how bright I want them to be when they're out in the edges because I kind of like that they are fading out I just hate when you're using a uh, letter stickers there's always leftovers so I decided to use up that stash so I could finally throw it out. So I used them on, on these crazy sheets, just glued them in because the the tacky glue that was underneath these letters were not strong enough. So, But okay, let me try and uh, heat set this just for a second because now I'm getting impatient. <laughs> Okay, guess what? <laughs> I was about to heat set it with my heat gun, but then I kind of thought that, you know what? Oil pastels, won't they melt when they get heated up and then become like liquid underneath? I'm not interested in that experience at all. <laughs> so I'm digressing from that plan. Just going to try and be patient. So now I'm grabbing a gelato, trying to make the transition from the hair a little bit more visual. And of course I'm bumping into the black oil pastel some places, but that's just the nature of it. Gelato is a soft stick usually, but mine are drying out. So use it or lose it. And I hate to say it, but <laughs> they are, they go the long way. So it's kind of difficult to use them up before they dry up. And that sort of annoys me because I really hate to throw out things. That are like not not used up completely. Oh, 
But lots of people dislike gelatos. Um, and I have been influenced a bit by that. So for some reason when I've been doing live streams I have frame from using them because I it always uh, ends up in a discussion in chat about how they freaking hate gelatos. But I have to say they have been like a lifesaver for me in this period of time where I have had some issues with my hands. And they were the reason why I tried to buy the the other gel stick that I showed earlier. Because I didn't want to go out and spend the money on a new set of gelatos, but I could see how they I benefit from using them at this point. Uh I find them to be too expensive, seriously. <laughs> so that's why I'm trying out different things. I would like to try out the Tim Holtz crayons because I think they're a bit better quality than the kit set that I got of these. Uh, yeah, I don't even know what they're called. I can't even see a name on them. They're from Germany. Um, Cola full. They can't. It's a misspelling of colorful. I don't even know if it's like a German way of saying it. But, yeah. For the time being, it's a go-to supply for me. And I can totally recommend if uh, others are on the road and want something quick. It's super easy to color in stamped images with uh, this kind of... Um, art supply <laughs> it's just water soluble so it, it's a nice way in a purse also to carry a water soluble medium and then because it's in a stick you don't need a brush if you're out there you got your fingers to smear with so it's a fun tool in in my point of view oh my god dry up <laughs> Okay, <laughs> it's not like completely dry, but it's dry to the touch, and it dried up transparent. I, you can see there is like these white, milky white areas, but it's dry to the touch. So I feel confident enough to try and, and continue working on it. I like that the whole face got this glossy sheen. So, yeah, <laughs> that's not the fun part. I'm really looking forward to this part right here. The paper is starting to get a lot of weight on it because there is a lot of things going on on the page. And this is what I like. It's kind of funny when you're, like, um, close to finish off a drawing. It means it, it matters something that the paper is getting heavier, <laughs> to me at least. So... There was this Amazon Prime, and the only sale item that I was interested in after browsing around was this acrylic ink set from Liquitex, and it's just the old generic basic set that comes with the primaries, a white, black, and umber. So, But I'm not like a prolific ink user at all. In fact, this is my first set of acrylic ink. The reason why I got it is because of the acrylic factor. I think it's supposed to be permanent when dry. So um, I kind of like that quality about it, that you can go on top of it with other wet mediums. Oh my god. Just a second. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Look at this, a pair of scissors with this strange thing in the middle. I once thought that it was some kind of a nutcracker or something, but uh, now it's like a useful tool if you've got ink lit that you're struggling with. Okay, I shook this up. So, um, <laughs> exciting. Okay, let's just love how it looks like now because I'm now probably going to mess it up and ruin it. But, um, yeah, we can see. That was before and now comes after. I'm thinking of just dropping in the umber and then with a brush moving it back and forth. This is a dry brush, so it's not liquefied. 
and of course I'm using a brush that's not um, anything special to me it's just a very very cheap brush that came in a in a set of uh, like supermarket <laughs> Uh, oil paint I think it was or was it acrylic I can't recall it okay I have dispersed it a little bit so now I'm tipping the paper I don't know how fast I need to work but I do want to see what happens if I sm spray mist it with water so Okay, that simply just dilutes it. I'm not sure that I want that. I do want the darkness of the umber. I think I should try and jelly print with this acrylic ink and see how it how it is to play with on the jelly plate. I wonder how fast it is to dry. The transition area down here, I think I can Oh cool, look you can just like dab it up. I have no idea if it's going to dry up like what you see is what you get kind of style or if it's changing its properties during the drying phase It's a little bit, not sticky, but you can tell that there's something <laughs> on this page that's not like just a, a water soluble thing, but it's going to dry dry up with uh, an oomph, you know, like, um, like a little bit sticky, sticky. I don't like the brush strokes that I'm leaving here on the page. Maybe I should try and wait that. And then just let it disperse on its own. Okay. So far, what do I have? What did I get? course you have like a ton of glare can you see how you can s it's still transparent you can see what's going on underneath it I should have gone in with like a darker coat of oil pastel even darker than this but for now I think I should leave it alone as much as I can I'm just lifting up 
some of it from the eye area so that my eye becomes more defined. Okay, let's see how it dries up. Okay, I think it's sort of dried up now. Um, it still looks like it's wet, but I totally, totally love that effect where the eye is hidden behind this kind of like uh, like a veil. I think that I lost the line work of this drawing a little bit. It got a little bit lost in all the colors. So it's not that transparent that it's made out of straight lines. So I tried to enhance uh, the hairline with some of the Ranger's enamel dots in black. And now I'm sitting here thinking since I lost the line work, it looks kind of weird that I got this uh, black um, line right here, like a an obscure kind of mustache or something. <laughs> so I am thinking about doing this dotted um, ranger thing around here. Just to emphasize that I really meant it to be like that, so it's not like just uh, an error on this uh, drawing. So I'm using the enamel accents from Ranger. And up close, it will have an effect. Like, um, like when you're sitting in front of the, the painting. But I'm not so sure that the camera will pick it up. But what I'm in particular sad about is that I lost the line here that's going from the eyelashes up to the um, eyebrow because uh, it's just an abstract face, you could say. So it's a shame that it's not visible. I mean, how often do... I do an abstract face, right? Not that often. So when I finally go for it, I should really make it super transparent that every move on this face's line work, or the line work on this face, every move of it is uh, done on purpose. So by giving her some extra dots like this, I think this is a nice way to show <laughs> the line work. And then I am actually thinking about giving her three dots down the cubic bow just to have some sort of a broken line between the dotted jaw line here. Of <laughs> I can't even talk while I'm doing this. But like I said, this will make sense when you look up close at this drawing. And the camera might not pick it up at all. So... But I'm glad that I'm doing this step right here because um, then it becomes more uh, transparent that this face is drawn with a different kind of line work than I usually do. So now we got her. <laughs> yeah, the camera doesn't really pick it up. There's a lot of sheen on this piece right here because I got like horrible light. But I think we're close to be finished on this one. I don't have the feeling of it being finished if you know what I mean. So I'm going of course to put it back in the pile. But for so far I am content. I totally totally dig that blurry eye I got underneath that stencil work. <laughs> Maybe I just like it because it's new for me to utilize that acrylic umber ink, but 
it uh, it was a, a, a fun toy. Fun, fun, fun. So if you watched this far, oh my God, thank you so much. It's been a long one for me, I know. Uh, I, I probably should have done this as a live stream, but I, I'm i sitting here in the middle of the night, so <laughs> I chose not to. But thank you so much for revisiting my channel, and have an awesome week. Bye-bye.